Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name's Peter Cherry. Uh, I'm the coordinator, current coordinator for the Masters of Art and Ireland in Trinity College, Dublin. That's me in the photo there. And um, I'd like to say a few words of introduction, welcome to those who think they might be, this might be a Masters for them. Uh, what you'll get from this is um, an understanding, really, of the best practice in art history through a series of modules which encourage you to understand, analyze uh, works of art and architecture in the city and in Ireland, and a range of documentation and archival sources too, as well as the um, uh, portfolio of methods and approaches current in our discipline. So there is a module dedicated to research methods, as we'll see in a minute, which will uh, articulate that ambition. And then there's also a series of taught modules that you take over your time, which um, inform and enrich the research component of this course. And this will, these will enable you to produce uh, original uh, scholarship and, and original research, which is part of the um, capstone or the crowning uh, aspect of the whole masters, which is the dissertation, which we'll talk about now. It's made up of um, a number of, the Masters is made up of a number of different components. It's normally a full-time Masters is 12 months from September, and the teaching is spread over 24 weeks, really, from September right through to, to April. Uh, and the summer months are dedicated to completing the dissertation, which is usually handed in at the end of August. That's a full, these are full-time students, so part-time students can take the masters over to over two academic years. Normally it's 90 credits, 90 and sorry, nine, uh, nine zero. And it comprises of a number of components. One is the research methods in art history, which is um, this introduction to uh, for students to the principal sources and methodologies, which enable them to undertake advanced study in the history of the world, and really provides an overview of the conceptual underpinnings of our discipline. Uh, it means also that those students who come in from cognate disciplines, uh, not directly from art history, um, they can, uh, this is very helpful for them in order to find, in, in, in help them to find their voice in, in research terms um, for the degree in the history work that they're undertaking with us. And the first semester of research methods would deal with, concentrate on research itself and it is how to do it and the second semester we really dedicate very um, intensely to um, writing skills and practical research skills in order to uh, ensure a successful completion of this of the dissertation the other compulsory model uh, the, sorry the other compulsory module one is research methods the second one is the dissertation itself and really that's the as i say the very very significant part of the of the masters it's it's itself uh, 30 credits of the, of the 90, which says it all, doesn't it? But it really is where students are encouraged to find an original research area and to find their voice as researchers in, in our field. And these dissertations between 15,000 and 20,000 words in length are very, very serious pieces of work indeed. We're very proud of the ones that are currently in the library and I'm sure future students will benefit greatly from that. There's so much to be done in, in our field. Then there are the taught the taught modules of which a student will take four. And these are ten credit modules, and there's a whole range of things which uh, cover many uh, areas of our discipline, from the medieval right through to the modern and the contemporary. Um, based on, in most cases, based on a direct engagement with works of art in situ, some of which are themselves in in, in Trinity College itself. Medieval monastic Ireland, uh, Ireland and France, 1800 to 2000, examining the relation between these two places. The art and agency of the printed image in Ireland from the 1800s to contemporary times. Modern architecture in the long 19th century. The art of the book in Islamic culture and my own on, on portraiture and portraits in Dublin collections. Uh, and also uh, uh, modules on gender, art and identity on the Gender Studies Centre. 
and an introduction to most of these modules, these um, thought modules will be um, following in individual um, in videos made by the respective uh, module leaders. Students, uh, students can take modules, uh, taught modules, 10 credit modules outside of the department uh, within our school. So history, classics, and the Centre for Gender Studies. And uh, as an example, this year, a number of students on the MPhil in art history took modules in the history department on the big house in Ireland. And it worked very well in terms of the research interest and played into the dissertation I thought, very, very well indeed. And as I say, we work very closely with the, the Centre for Gender Studies too. So you'd get really, I think, uh, a good understanding of the best practice in art history that, through these modules. Um, and we would encourage you to, to think about joining us. The big question is why? Why us? Why, why Dublin? And why not somewhere else? Well, I mean, the college itself has um, is is a perfect place for for advanced study. I think I mean, even the even the fabric even the fabric of of the, of the college is um, uh, buildings, for instance, have been uh, important important research sources uh, for students in the past and continue to be so. Uh, it's in the centre of the college is in the centre of town. Uh, it has, apart from the significant buildings, it has some wonderful green spaces and uh, you're in the centre of everything really, and not just the college, but uh, you've got all of the major museums around within walking distance, Chester Beatty, National Gallery of Ireland, Emma, uh, Hugh Lane, and they're all there for you. So this emphasis we place in our masters on the direct engagement of students with works of art is, is, is genuine. Um, and this is, um, it starts from the very spot in which you're located, which is the college itself. Um, and you're among the many amenities, uh, resources in the college uh, that you as students can avail of is the, is the Trinity College Irish Art Research Centre, which is um, for our post postgraduate research, research centre, which uh, has interesting and important archives and resources, including uh, a collection of former dissertations, which uh, often um, remain unpublished, but are serious uh, pieces of work which are available for your consultation. This is a dedicated research centre that after your master's you may indeed go on to even um, further studies and um, be part of this, uh, this operation. And then, of course, the, probably the jewel in the crown has to be the, the, the library itself, not just the place, but it's as a repository of, of resources for, for students working in our area. Um, major collections uh, of uh, on the island of, of material of, of vast range of materials, uh, not just books, but manuscripts and all, all kinds of resources which would, uh, which would sort of surprise you if you join us. And um, many, many things to be to be to be to be done uh, with the library and library resources. The college does encourage that. There's a major program under underway to um, to encourage uh, the use of, of these these some cases rather untapped resources. Uh, it is a library of, uh, obviously has major, uh, its, its entity is, and its, its, its holdings are, are all to do with the place we, we, we're, we're in and the history and culture of, of the island. Uh, but it's uh, surprisingly international in its scope and the degree is called Art Plus Ireland to uh, allow the space for uh, researchers who would like to study uh, phenomena on the island of Ireland, but which may relate to uh, wider international, uh, have wider um, um, international parameters. A very good case of that is the, the talk module on the art of art of the book in Islamic culture, because there's this collection of unparalleled collection of of, of Islamic material in the Chester Beatty Library. The same would go for the for the library itself. Um, they might personal case, I look at art and um, paintings and sculptures of the of, of Europe. And um, there are major resources to be had here. So uh, there's scope for students to, to, to investigate or research in areas which are, are related to, to where we are, but are, uh, are, are much are, can be broader, broader in scope than 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 than, 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 than well, the, the breadth of the scope of the possibilities or the range of possibilities for research is reflected in that title, Art Plus Ireland. That was our 
intention anyway. So uh, if you feel like joining us, do. Uh, and my email was at the beginning of the talk and uh, get in touch. All right, see you. My name is Dr. Anna McSweeney, and this is my module, The Arts of the Book. The Arts of the Book looks at the art of the book in Islamic cultures. We will focus on manuscripts and works on paper from early Qurans, from 10th century Iraq, to the medieval Persian Book of Kings, the Shahnameh manuscripts, looking at Mughal portraiture, Ottoman world maps, for example. We will look at all aspects of Islamic book culture, with a focus specifically on the examples that are held in the collection of the Chester Beatty Library in Dublin. The Chester Beatty Library is just up the road from Trinity in the centre of Dublin and holds a world-class collection of Islamic manuscripts. Much of the module will focus on object handling and there will be an element of independent research projects dealing with the collection directly. We will look at topics including manuscript production, material histories, calligraphy, book binding, portraiture, as well as thinking about object biographies, issues of cultural identity and of collecting histories. Here's the Chester Beatty Library. It's only five minutes walk from Trinity. We will uh, spend quite a bit of time, hopefully, looking at handling sessions, engaged in handling sessions with the collection. Here are some students from a previous handling session in a different library, but looking directly at collections themselves, which I think gives you a really um, exciting and first-hand experience of um, look, dealing with the arts of the book. We'll think about material histories, about the histories of parchment and paper, for example, with a focus on the Islamic manuscripts, but looking beyond that as well at other uh, examples. And we will, of course, have access to thinking about and, and examining the extraordinary world-class collection of masterpieces in Islamic art uh, at the Chester Beatty Library. Some of these pictured here, uh, the Quran manuscripts, as well as secular manuscripts such as the Shahnameh um, or the Bustan of Saadi. And I'm really looking forward to meeting you and to being able to explore this extraordinary world of Islamic manuscripts uh, and arts of the book with you, should you choose to take the module. Let's start with an example, this version by Robert Bella of Jericho's Raft of the Medusa, which he reworked as a commentary on the folly and consequences of the so-called Celtic Tiger years. It is one of a series of homage to well-known French prototypes that Bella has produced since the 1970s, and it exemplifies one of the many and varied artistic relationships that have existed between Ireland and France. In this module, we look at those relationships and reflect on the impact of French models of thought and works of art in Ireland. For example, we look at how 18th century artistic education in Dublin was based on French principles and how and why, from the 1850s onwards, Irish artists such as Nathaniel Hone the Younger, Sarah Purser and W.J. Leach joined the international vogue and went to France as a place of basic or advanced training. We trace the influences of realism, impressionism, post-impressionism and cubism that were gradually infused into Irish art by returning artists and how Irish audiences were exposed to original French works of art from Jericho to Glaze uh, that were exhibited in Ireland and the reception of such works. We also look at how, from the 1850s, Irish art was received in France, initially as part of the British school and the ways in which Irish art gained a quasi-diplomatic function following independence in 1922 and EU membership in 1973. Hello and welcome to a short introduction to the module The Artist in the Printed Image, Concepts, Technologies and Dissemination from 1900 to the Present. My name is Angela Griffith. On the right you will see me taking a class in Trinity's Early Printed Books Department an important aspect of the module is engaging with original artworks and limited edition publications. We will visit other collections, engage with contemporary artist printmakers, and we will visit workshops. We will explore the print as a creative medium, understanding how it is made and consider how making informs meaning. Artists have made printed images for centuries. Prints are often more accessible, easier to distribute, resulting in wider audiences. Prints have crossed borders, cultures, and time. For that reason, 
it is argued that printed images have been an effective agent for, for change. And it is important to ask, what is a print? What is meant by terms original, reproductive? How have printmakers adapted to the digital age? How are prints valued? And there is the long tradition of the artist and the book. The relationship between the artist and the writer will be explored, drawing on Trinity's extensive collections and beyond. Thank you for your time, and I hope we have the opportunity to work together in the future. Hi, my name is Chris Cowell. Um, I'm the Assistant Professor of Architectural History, Modern and Contemporary, here at the Department of the History of Art and Architecture. Um, so I teach this module called Modern Architecture of the Long 19th Century. And without a doubt, the 19th century is a most exhilarating epoch that defined our modern condition. It may not have had the media focus and frenzy of the 20th century, but it set many of the pieces in motion. This seminar course examines architecture along this long 19th century, by which I mean from the mid 18th century to the early 20th. For art history, the 1750s, a period called the Enlightenment, was a decade when a number of influential treaties on art and architecture and perception came out, including works by Marc-Antoine Logier on purity in classical architecture, Edmund Burke on the sublime and the beautiful, and Jean-Jacques Rousseau's discourse on the origin and foundations of inequality. This century ushered in the Industrial Revolution and the development of modern capitalism. It saw the emergence of globalism, of early telecommunications, steam-powered shipping and railways, of the skyscraper, and massive urbanization of cities, and with it, extraordinary social and cultural changes. This long 19th century may be said to end in the apocalyptic turmoil of World War I, but also for Ireland in the War of Independence and architectural destruction and in India, in the opulent construction of New Delhi. I've chosen for this very short introduction to show you just one image. It was drawn by the French illustrator Gustave Doré, who on visiting London, then the largest city in the world, at least in population, produced a series of 180 wood engravings. Many of these images are caked with the dark soot, squalor, chaos and filth that came as the price for progress. Here we see in a chaotic traffic jam at Ludgate Hill in the city of London via Fleet Street, the nerve centre of newspaper publishing in England, that everything comes to a standstill. Many of the themes of my weekly seminars seem to be mapped onto this image. We have the shadow of architectural history looming above the traffic in the Dome of St. Paul's Cathedral, the various institutions of the city presenting themselves as new building types, individuals swallowed up in the swarm of society, nature and resources exploited, the soot from the funnel of the locomotive choking the sky. We see how industry has been pushed at the expense of human labour. Even the hearse containing the dead cannot move. Consumption is glaringly advertised on billboards floating above that shape the new domestic middle-class life of the suburbs beyond, carried by the promise of speedy transportation. Culture and morality are mobile objects in the great game of metropolitan life as sustained by a global empire fueling this vast mass of people. And yet, here, they are ground to a standstill, victims of their own emboldened pursuits. Here lies a paradox of being modern. Medieval monastic Ireland focuses on the abundant remains of medieval Christian architecture that survive across the country. Using a mixture of architectural analysis and archival sources, we explore the impact of monasticism on Ireland's physical and social landscape. The course moves from exploring the unique and evocative early sites like Skellig Michael, to those of the later Middle Ages, including the friaries that helped to shape many of our modern towns and formed a social and spiritual support network in more remote locations, such as here at Ross Eric. 
The extended biographies of these buildings, what's happened to them in the almost 500 years since the dissolution, is an equally fascinating story that informs various aspects of later Irish history. Our course culminates with group projects that tackle the many challenges that face the interpretation and preservation of these unique buildings into the future. Hello, my name is Peter Cherry and I'm in the Department of the History of Art. My module is on portraits and portraiture in Dublin collections. The key thing there is that we talk about things in the collections in Dublin. We're in front of objects, we're in front of portraits uh, in situ. And I think that's where the fun is to be had, that's where the inquiry is to be most productive. And therefore we don't work from slides, we're, we're seeking these things out in the, in the places where they are. And that includes the college, the long room, the famous long room, the college library as a set of portrait busts, which we look at and wonder why they, who they are, why they're there, where they've been, etc., and by whom they've been made. And there's, there's been some, there are some surprises to be had there in terms of um, their authorship. So that's an example, it's an obvious example. And it covers a lot of different kinds of portraiture, different, different historical periods. The Boyle Monument, for instance, in the St. Patrick's Cathedral, a very rare survivor of uh, this kind of, um, modern um, imagery and which is most productively discussed in in front of the very thing so uh, the commemorative nature of portraiture the gendered nature of portraiture is always being all up for grabs there by the national gallery uh, of ireland with um, some very good examples of, of uh, historical portraiture right up to the present national gallery of ireland hosts a, a portraiture prize there's Graham Norton in front of uh, in front of one of these houses, and holds the houses the National Portrait Collection. So um, we we'll look at that, and it includes very important modern contemporary figures such as um, Freud and his portraits in the uh, Emma and the Contemporary Art Museum of Dublin. So there's a lot to be seen, a lot to be thought about, and well, I wouldn't think it's a history. I wouldn't claim it to be a history, a linear history of portraiture. Uh, I think the kinds of things we look at question all sorts of um, ideas around portraiture, the conventions of portraiture, uh, cultures of memory, typology of portraiture, what they mean, who gets to be portrayed, the continued relevance or not of the form uh, and the portrait of the category. And it, I would always encourage uh, group discussions uh, in, the, um, in the classes. There would be some reading and uh, looking ahead of the class, but uh, but once we're prepared and we're in front of the thing, it should be fireworks after that. Okay, so I look forward to seeing some of you on this module and see you then. Bye.